Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is uh, show you what a truth table is, where it kind of comes from, as well as the different truth statements for our different conditional statements. So a truth table is a way for us to basically take a con conditional statement with all these words and kind of break it down to our components so therefore we can determine kind of the truth and validity of the statement. Um, so I kind of started our conditional statements with a original statement that said, all circles have a radius, right? And then we broke that into a conditional statement by saying, you know, if it is a circle, then it has a radius, right? And we labeled, we knew this was a conditional statement because of the if and the then parts. And furthermore, as far as a conditional statement is, we have a hypothesis and a conclusion. Remember, the hypothesis always follows the if, and the conclusion always followed the then. Um, then what we did was, you know, we just kind of determined the truth of it based on if we had a counterexample or not. So if everything kind of fit and it worked, then we said it was true. But if it didn't work and we could prove it by with a counterexample, then we could show it's false. Well, by using truth tables, we can actually make this much, much quicker. And one of the ways that we can do that is by uh, labeling our hypothesis and our conclusion. And I showed in the beginning, a lot of times what we like to do, especially for truth tables, is labeling our hypothesis as P and our conclusion as Q. Then, if we're looking at our, you know, tr this statement as it being true, if it is a circle, it's true. Uh, you know, let's just say if we have a circle, that being true, and then it has a radius, which we know is then true. Well, therefore, the truth of that statement is true. So a truth table is a way for us to kind of represent that. So let's pretend P is going to represent any hypothesis, Q represents any conclusion. So I'm giving you an example, but it really doesn't matter what example you're given in a book or on a test. Um, P represents any uh, hypothesis, Q represents any conclusion. And the conditional form is going to be if P then Q, which a lot of times we'll write with P arrow to Q. So if we're saying we have a circle, but then we're saying that we, it has a radius, which is both true, therefore that statement we know is going to be true, right? Um, however, if we say we have a circle, we're saying, yes, you know, I have a circle. But then I say it does not have a radius, which would be like, which is obviously false, right? I mean, you, you can't, if it has a circle, then it has to have a radius. We know that. But if I tell you, you know, it has a circle, but it doesn't have a radius, you know I'm lying, right? You know that's not possible. So if we're saying the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false, the best way I think about it is you're lying. If you say, so, if you say the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false, then you're lying. So therefore, the conclusion is going to be false. And you know, um, you know, think about that. Again, if you have a circle, but it does not have a radius, uh, that's not true, right? That's false. Now, it gets really confusing here is what if we say the hypothesis is false, but then the conclusion is true? So this one makes this one get confused with a lot of students because if we say, well, what if we is that we don't have a circle, but then we say, well, but it does have a radius. Well, the thing is though, I'm not technically lying because I'm already saying like, since your since the hypothesis is false and the conclusion is true, the, your statement is still actually going to be true because you never really said that it was a you know circle but not a radius. So even though we're saying like it's not a circle, like if I give you some figure and it looks like a square, and you say, hey, you know, this is a circle. Well, no, it's not. That's false, right? But then I said, hey, but it has a radius. Well, yes, it does have a radius. That's true. But you were wrong. Your you know hypothesis was wrong. But again, you weren't initially lying because you had your hypothesis wrong. So your statement is still considered true. I know it gets really confusing. And then the last one is, you know, let's say you take that square and you say, hey, this is a circle, um, and, but it doesn't have a radius. Well, yes, that is actually a true statement because it actually isn't a circle and no, it does not even have a radius. So if you have a false hypothesis and a false, and a false conc uh, conclusion, then your statement is also true. So the best way to kind of remember on truth tables, especially for conditional statements, the only time a conditional statement is going to be false the only time a conditional statement is going to be false is when the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false. That's it. Remember that. Everything else, your conditional statement is going to be true. But the only time you can show that a conditional statement is false 
is when the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. Okay, so now let's kind of go through what the different um, what the different conditional statements are. So here's just a regular conditional statement. Now let's go ahead and find the converse. Now if you remember, the converse is just swapping, you know, p and q. So the converse is going to be if q, then p, right? So let's think about this. Now it's going if, tr if q, then p. So instead of going if p, then q, now we're going if q, then p. So if true, then true, that's true. If false, then true, that's still true. If true, then false, oh, that's false. And if false, then false, that's false. Now, to get to the inverse, what we have to do is we have to negate them, right? So remember negation. So we're going to use a tilde. So opposite of p is I'm basically just going to take the opposite of all these. So I'm going to do false, false, true, true. And then opposite of q is going to be false, true, false, true. So I'm basically just taking the opposite of each one of these. Because when I want to find the inverse, remember the inverse is opposite of p to opposite of q. That is what we call the inverse. Right? And you can see how much easier it is to like do these rather than saying like if p then q or opposite of p then opposite q, rather than writing out if it is a circle, if it is not a circle, or if it is a radius, if it is not does not have a radius. Like all that kind of stuff, it can takes a long time. So just representing them as q and p, you know, makes less sense. And when you get confused, you know, yeah, it's sometimes helpful to write out if it does not have radius or if it is not a circle, like write out that negation. But the easiest way to remember is again, if your statement is, if your if your hypothesis is true and your conclusion is false, your statement is always going to be false. So let's look at the inverse. Um, if if not p, then not q, right? So again, false false is going to be true. If false, then true. That's still a true statement. If true, then false is going to be a false statement. And if true, then true is going to be oops. Wait a minute. If q, then false. True, false, true, true, that's true. My bad. Um, true, true, and then, and then if true, then true, that's going to be, if true, then true, that's going to be true. And then the last one is going to be the contrapositive. So remember, the contrapositive is going to be if not q, then not p. So opposite of q to opposite of p. That's why it's nice to kind of write these negations here. So opposite of p, opposite of q. So opposite of p is going to be, or sorry, opposite of q. So false to false is going to be true. Uh, opposite of q, which is true to false, which is going to be false. False to true, which is going to be true. And then true to true, which is going to be true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how um, conditional contrapositive. All right, what the, why is that? That's so weird. True, 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 true. Opposite of Q, opposite of P. True to false. That's it. I messed that up. True to false. Opposite of P, false to true, false to true. Q to P. True to false. Ah, that's it. OK, I messed this up. I was wondering, and I'll explain why I knew that. OK, so Q to P. So if Q to P, true, true, true. False to true is true. True to false is false. I think I like messed that up. So that one was false. And then false to false is true. There we go. Um, so the reason why I knew that is, remember, the inverse and the converse are logically equivalent. That means their truth tables should be the exact same, whereas the contrapositive and the conditional, those two, are also logically equivalent. So those are going to have the same truth table. So that's why I caught my mistake. Good thing I did um, before I did. I apologize for those of you if I might have confused you initially. Um, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is how we use truth tables. That's why we use truth tables. And that is the truth table for your conditional, converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Thanks.